Today on the show, Michael Stringer of Spirit Box lets us know what he's been doing to keep his mind occupied during the self-quarantine. Worship and tribute, Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Michael, a.k.a. Rickshaw, and this is Worship and Tribute Nerd. Today, I have a very special guest, one of my good friends that I used to play in a band with. Hey. And we used to tell each other jokes endlessly in a van down by the river. Yep. This, we've got Michael Stringer. I'm here. Hi. We did it. <laughs> I know we did it. We I, made it happen. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm recording. And uh, everything's recording. And I'm on. If, if I I'm fuck, on. if I fuck this one up, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to do after that. You know, we don't. We don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about the lost episode. Yeah, we we filmed uh, we filmed one of these before, and it was one of the best ones I've done. Yeah. And I forgot to hit record on my mic. Yeah. His was Basically good. Basically, just Command E, empty trash. You know, like. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, what's for having me, my friend? It's very nice to talk to you. Yeah, it's it's always nice to talk to you. <laughs> so, uh, so what's how's Spirit Box been, buddy? Good. Well, uh, <laughs> I should say interesting. Right. I should say interesting. It's funny because the, the the band itself has been like an online entity for for years, mm-hmm. and we've been working so hard to gear up to actually going out and doing it live, and. You know, we, we got the uh, the ATB offer and everything, and we were just like, oh, crap, like, this is real now. We're going to have to actually, like, do this, you know? Right. And um, it's just been an interesting experience because, you know, it's kind of now gone in the reverse where we worked so hard to get to a point where we could, like, go out and do it for real. And then that got cut short, and now we're right back to like having to focus on like the online stuff. So luckily at this point, we're kind of like seasoned, seasoned vets of just sitting at home and going like this and like, yeah. you know, ta- yeah. pretending to be, uh, you know, like a real thing online. But it's been interesting because like we've had to, we've, we've been gearing up for the tour and like a record and all that stuff. And now it's just kind of up in the air and we're just waiting for, you know, the borders to open. So we Dude, can go and, <laughs> it's, like, it's it's so insane the state of the world right now like because it's just like everything's just like nope well let's just see how it goes you know like mm-hmm. let's just uh like the casino that i work at has been like since the day it turned 24 hours it has not closed once and that and, and that's like over a decade ago closed now <clears throat> and then they just now it was supposed to be till april 1st and then now they just extended it until april 15th today which it's yeah. still like, that's not even like maybe even longer. You know what I mean? Like with the state of the world, like could be longer. Yeah, like what? That's let me see here. That's uh, three weeks away. <laughs> like by the by the time by the time that this airs, things could be completely different. Yeah, again. that's true. Like it could yeah. have gotten worse. Could have gotten better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's it's a very interesting time to be alive, to say the least. Um, it's very difficult for bands and and you know just anyone in that industry it was it was wild just even discovering that like the tour was going to be canceled like we finished playing in um i can't remember exactly where we were i knew i know that we were in the czech republic we finished playing the show um got on the bus everybody was just hanging out we stopped at a gas station for like the first time the whole entire trip. So everybody got out and like spent way too much money <laughs> on snacks and everything. Right. And everybody was having a good time. And then some people went to bed and then all of a sudden we're like on like the first level and you just hear this person go, what the hell? And then another person would be like, is this real? And then another person would be like, person would be like oh my God. And it was when um, Trump basically announced the travel ban. Right. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> our drummer's American ATB is American, um, and you know it was like get home in two days, otherwise you're stuck. And we spent from like 1 a.m. to well, first we thought that maybe we would do the UK dates, and then we would just miss the last couple like uh, dates in Germany. 
And then that about 20 minutes later, that turned into, oh, no, 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 we're leaving from Heathrow in like two days. So we need to, we need to get home. And so once they called it, immediately we started like going on our phones and like going on all these websites for, for tickets and everything. But because everyone else in the world is doing the exact same thing, basically, everything was completely frozen and shut down. So from 1 a.m. to like 6 a.m., we're like going down the highway and I have no cell service. And I got to the point of checking out six or seven times on these tickets and I put in all of our personal information. I go click buy and it was it would just freeze. So for like six hours, I'm like, we're not getting home. And we're like freaking out because mm-hmm. everyone else has already figured it out. And we're just like, you know, basically shit out of luck. <laughs> Long story short, like. You know, we, we, we figured it all out and it and, and, and ended up working fine. But, like, it was just such a bizarre experience to be, like, so happy. Everybody's having a great time. And then just like that, it's like everything's canceled. You have to go home right away. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can only all- – I mean, I was, like – I was already excited for y'all. You know, like we used to be in a band together. You know, we, the way we look at music and talk about music could be different compared to just like, you know, a normal listener or whatever. And I, and just knowing what it's like to be in a band and to, and to play with y'all, like I was like so stoked. Like, like, oh my God, their first tour is in Europe with After the Burial. You know, this is tight. And then I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> like if I was like if I was like if there is a god he's a fucking malicious savage yeah. bastard you know what I mean like for you yeah. that's and yeah so cue the curb your enthusiasm music you know what I mean like, <laughs> it's just like no man but no that means a lot yeah I mean like it was just such a dream for us and it was so much work getting to the point where like it was you know we were confident the session was good everybody was good to go Mm -hmm. and then even getting back into the mode of like touring and you know like we don't have any crew so me and bill at the moment we'd finish playing we'd be standing at merch the whole entire night and like just like meeting people and and hanging out stuff and getting used to all that again and then halfway through to have that like to get into that mode and be coasting and being like oh this is i remember this this is fine and then all of a sudden it's gone right and Oh, like I'm sure that you just got into that like that comfort zone to where you're like, oh, yeah, um, you you, you um, know, yeah, yeah. Like when, when we used to do it, like it would take like, you know, especially in Europe and stuff, like you know, four or five days at least to kind of get into the, yeah, you know? yeah. especially with that, uh, you know, with the the time differences, the jet lag, the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the yeah, food, it would, it would, you know, <laughs> yeah. It was rough for us because we we've been so out of the game for so long. The last tour that we all did together was November 2015. Yeah, yeah, that's, and it, it's just been yeah, that's <laughs> so rusty. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, and we 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 had played we played three shows last year, and then we played two shows um, with meeting our drummer two days before the first show that we played before we left. And then we left to do the tour. So we had only played five shows as a band. So yeah. going into this, we were terrified because we we're like, what if everyone hates us? What if we don't, what, what if we do all the typical, like, you know, one of five stuff that all these bands do where they just like leave their shit around and they like make mistakes. Everyone hates them or blah, blah, blah. Thankfully it wasn't the case. And like, everybody was super nice and everybody was, um, was were so amazing to tour with and everything they were extremely helpful they wanted to help us you know what i mean right um but uh yeah just just a wild experience and because we were one of the uh first tours to cancel due to all this stuff it was pretty uncertain if like it was an overreaction you know what i mean like if it was like oh well maybe we could have done the uk dates and then the moment that we flew home the uk announced the following day they were closing their border so, and tickets just skyrocket, obviously, because it was just like, you know, what are you going to do? It's, yeah. it, it's what it is. So we're, we were very thankful to be home and we were very thankful that everybody made the decisions that they did because otherwise we would have been screwed, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's also hard with the way the internet works and the way that everyone reacts to the internet nowadays too. It's like, because it was like, it was like, it was the most, you know, this is being blown out of proportion this is what the hell and then and then now it's like 
we we can't even go to work, dog. Like you're not even supposed to leave yeah. the house, dog. You know what I mean? And like, and there's still people that are like think it's a it's a big joke, and they're you know what I mean? It's like, dude, like I, the, I know for a fact the government wants our money. <laughs> they love it. They love our money. They wouldn't tell us to stay home and not work. Yeah, you know, for no reason. Because I mean, <laughs> you, you got people out here blaming cell phone towers. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no matter what, you're always going to have the idiots that like. Like, it, it was also interesting coming from um, being in like the quote unquote like epicenter at the time for all this stuff. Because the last week that we were playing our shows the topic kind of got brought up more and more from people, even just like at the merch table, like the people would come up and be like, so how are you guys going to deal with like canceled shows? And like from early of the last week, to like right at the end, it was like the conversation was brought up more and more and more to the point where like at the last show, <laughs> I, I actually had a moment where I was like, man, like 15 people have come up to me and asked me what we're going to do when all this stuff gets canceled. Like, and then I went up to our TM and I was like, do you think all this stuff's going to get canceled? He's like, I don't know, like maybe. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was interesting coming from that to then coming home in Canada, like on our you know little island here where it's all so separated and secluded, you know, and mm -hmm. no one, well, I shouldn't say no one, but a lot of people haven't been taking it seriously. Like I'm still, we live by a park. I go out there and I'll, I'll be driving and I'll look over and like the park's full of like kids, people walking their dogs, like that are like not far apart from one another. Yes, yeah. and it's just unfortunate. And I, I, I think that it's going to take some of these people, maybe close friends or someone in their family, to be affected for for them to actually take it seriously. That they're not right thinking that this is a permanent real thing. When in reality, it's like what we do right now is going to determine the next six months. So stay the hell inside, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is it's that... like, it's nothing we've ever seen in our lifetime. You know what I mean? Like it's big enough to where no. it's that, you know, and I, and I can't, and I could understand at first, you know, before it even got here. Yeah. I can understand someone being like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, especially yeah. with all these like fake articles versus new or versus real articles and all this shit. You know what I mean? But, but Dude, yeah. I've I've I watched Outbreak when, when I was a kid. You know, <laughs> I I was like, you don't know, like you know, there was a point in time where I I like right whenever it was starting to happen, I went to Austin and then I came back, and I was still just like, I, what if I go to the wrong gas station and pick up the wrong gas pump that some dude, you know, picked up? Yep. Then it's then it's already me, you know. But I don't think people take that in consideration, especially all the kids in Florida that are doing spring break and stuff. So the video I just put out today, we did we did in front of the green screen, and I interviewed Fuzz via, you know, like a, a yeah. FaceTime, and uh, I put Florida behind me. So we were just like, I don't know how old he is. He, he looks like maybe twenty, twenty one. He's like, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I've been saving up for this trip for three months. If I get, <laughs> I get it. It doesn't matter, you know. <laughs> and he already looks like he's got some shit. <laughs> yeah, like you have a lot more to worry about than COVID, my man. But uh, you know, it's just it just goes to show that like no matter how far we come with this and like the advances we make with it, there's always going to be a small percentage of the population that just makes it way worse for everybody. <laughs> Dude, and, yeah. Did you have you watched any movies over the the self quarantine, my, Michael Stringer? No, you know what? Uh, I've been big into uh, Love is Blind. Oh. You know about that? Oh, I know. I know about that. I, it's my I, favorite. Yeah. I have a girlfriend, and she has girlfriends, and yep. that's that's what they do. They watch yeah. uh, the reality television and stuff like that. Yeah. I, the, the trashiest reality TV is like – just make it as trashy as possible. I, I, I love it. I, it I'm obsessed. Dude. It's insane. Like they like seriously, the fact that they are supposed to fall in love, mm -hmm. but, like without seeing a person, and ask them to marry them before mm -hmm. they even see each other is insane. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like the people, like okay, so I get the people. The people are like, I just want to be famous. So I just want to make some money and meet someone to bang. <laughs> <laughs> they then, all sound like that. 
<laughs> but but the psychos, you know, the real supervillains are the fucking showrunners, man. Like seriously, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like I'm I'm only I'm not super deep into it. I think I'm like on like episode five, and there's already been just insane stuff happening where I just I'm just sitting there being like, it can't be real. This can't be real. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I love it. The only reason that I've I even saw like the first see I, I don't subject myself to those I can't I just like I'm like I'm like dude if I want to see some some bullshit mindless entertainment I go watch like wrestling or something you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah. like there's a good story there and they're still beating each other up in a sense you know dude, but- <laughs> I think I think the storylines behind like WWE and stuff super underrated I know. Yeah, I- I think that there's some real complex, amazing stuff going on that people just, they push it off like, oh, it's just wrestling. It's all fake. No, no, no. Someone writes some pretty amazing stuff for that. I, especially <laughs> like, you know, if, if we're getting into wrestling, you know, uh, yeah. if like back in the day, everyone thought it was real. You know, it was like real a real thing. And then yeah. when, it, when everybody found out it was fake, they had to make up new ways to make it real again so it's like they've danced the line so many times yeah but yeah the only reason i even saw like up to episode three and to on love is blind is because my girlfriend fell asleep on my lap while we were watching it and there was no escape (laughs) (laughs) they're playing all along (laughs) yeah so i was just like yeah i was like this is what happened this is what happened don't ever make me watch that shit again yeah yeah yeah. so it was a one-off, right? For me, for me, not so much. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, have you seen since since the pandemic and everything the the WCW or whatever doing it without a crowd? Like they are doing all their shows with no crowd. Oh my god! Yeah. So really? it's like, yeah. So it's like it's almost more awesome because uh you know they'll sit there and do their monologues like i'm calling you out you did this brother remember that <laughs> and then there's like nothing and they're just like and there's like a long pause because they're waiting <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, oh. I even read i read an article that was like uh you know pro wrestling without fans is awesome question yeah. mark <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome oh dude one of my favorite clips ever is uh it's like this viral video of this old guy who's sitting in the bleachers of like, I guess there's like an amateur wrestling, like not a, like a, like a Q and a, right. And he gets past the microphone and it's like, it's just really shitty audio. So it's like clanking in his hand and stuff and he gets it and he just starts like tearing up and he's like, you know, everyone tells me it's not real, but it's real to me. Damn it. And he just starts like crying and tearing up. <laughs> And some guy like comes over, he's like, dude, calm down. And he's like <laughs> crying his eyes out. <laughs> dude. I mean, re- like, t- I, I get how people can say it's real, but then I get offended by people saying it's not real because it's like, it's like sports. It's sports yeah. with a script because you're really getting jacked and you're really like jumping off shit and you're really getting hurt. You're jumping off of yeah. like 20 foot cages and stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah. CGI. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so that shit hurts, dude. I mean, I could fucking bend down now and be like, "Ooh, ah!" <laughs> I'm like, "Ah, picked up the remote. Damn it!" <laughs> didn't, yeah, didn't expect to do that today, dude. The last week of just not doing anything for some reason has made my left knee just be like, I, I can't even, dude. Like, I can't bend over. I can't sit down without being like, "Ah," <laughs> you know, dude. They my back, funny. my back is like twisted man like like i had i did i ran out of so i ran out of uh chiropractor appointments you know yeah i I pay for them like in advance or whatever i had i bought like a package and i was i was out of them and i was just like man all this sitting around makes my fucking back fucking pound i'm just like i'm like trying to get people to like do chiropractor moves on me i'm like i'll lay down like this if you try and twist me <laughs> Come on, google yeah. how to do what a chiropractor does <laughs> yeah so i so i went and i finally just was like fuck it i'm gonna spend the money and this dude it was like a new dude that like wasn't yeah. the normal guy and he just like fucked me up so bad i was like i was like he was really rough but i'm still satisfied <laughs> <laughs> Here's your hundred bucks. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I have, I have a guy that beats me up. It's awesome. Um, I, a lot of people are against it. Why? You know? I don't know. A lot of people are just like, no, it's not real. Like, it doesn't do anything. But for me, man, I don't know. Like, it's, when when I when I get my back cracked, I feel like a thousand times better, dude. Yeah, I'll be it only for like eight hours, but still, <laughs> it's, it's a good. Well, I mean, it, like if I go like once uh, a month or every two, then I do feel better in the long run. Yeah, it's yeah. When, it's whenever I start neglecting it and being like, I'm good, I'm good. How much is it again? How much does it cost? I'm good, I'm good. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm just like, I brush my teeth wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now more than ever, I I think uh, I, it was the realization of me being like, oh damn, I'm actually I'm climbing up the ladder. I'm getting pretty old now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't talk until you're like you know, yeah. like thirty in your. Once you put, once you pull into like thirty four, you're starting to be like, "What are those things in my body hurting for? Like, why? <laughs> like, dear God, here, God, I at, didn't even, they were there. <laughs> God at Gmail. What, what's what's going on, dude? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me a sign. Well, I'm kind of having the reverse effect now because like our uh, our new drummer, or the guy who's playing with us right now, he's nineteen years old. <sighs> I know. So. I, I thought he looked pretty young, but I, you know, I didn't assume that young. He's a young boy. <laughs> he's young. He's <laughs> taking the role, the mantle of the young. Yeah. We're we're a bunch of old guys hanging out with uh, practically a minor. It's pretty yeah, cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, he's the he's the best. Um it's I, I don't I it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Um, but it's just funny touring with someone who's um a little younger than you and they're kind of doing the whole like, wow, you guys like you guys are old, huh? And you're like, oh, <laughs> I remember yeah. what this was like. I remember. Now it's me. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Time has passed. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and you know, and we've we've pulled into that uh, portion to where we're like, how long ago? That was that was like a couple years ago, and then you're like, oh wait, no, that was like six years ago. <laughs> it's like a couple is now six. <clears throat> Yeah, it's crazy. The, the first tour I did with you guys was in 2013. It was seven years ago. Ah, it's been so long. <laughs> Isn't that wild? It's crazy. That is crazy. It's but, crazy. But yeah, I mean, which you know, which leads us to you know, what what, what have you been doing? What have you been doing to <laughs> to keep yourself busy, keep yourself entertained? You know. Uh, I've been. Well, we already talked about Love Is Born. Right. <laughs> uh, of course, of course. Right. No, I, I've I've been writing a lot and um, just been cooped up in this room and just trying to not drive myself crazy. Lucky enough, I can work from home, mm. which is nice. Right. So that's also kind of made it so I'm not wanting to pull my hair out. Um, but yeah, man, just just I've just been trying to get a heads up on everything and um, like we we had. We had about 10 songs ready to go for the record. Yeah. Um, but now I'm just going to try and push it and try to just write as many as possible. I guess that's one upside of this whole entire thing is that like any creative, you know, like content creator or anything yeah. like it's just having a field day right now. Just going, oh, I have all this time. Oh, my God. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so funny that I, I've seen more humble ass shit lately since since like you know it's like we can't go to work and we're not supposed to go anywhere so i just see people like playing in their front lawn with their family and like going for jogs and shit and i'm like yeah. i'm like hey whatever some dude's building this kid a tree house i guess that's what it took <laughs> yeah it takes, it takes the end of the world for dad to finally go out and build that tree house <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I guess I have to do it now. Like, oh, fuck. I'm fucking <laughs> these bullshit viruses making yeah. me fucking build a treehouse and shit. Afraid of heights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Billy, you went to Home Depot six months ago. You gotta you gotta take that wood from the garage and make it for Tommy. Well, Come now, on. Now we gotta save those boards in case we gotta use them on the windows. <laughs> <laughs> Treehouse or surviving the apocalypse? I don't know. How's the, how's, yeah. how's the toilet paper situation for y'all, though? Um, non-existent. No, it's not happening there. It's not happening here. Um, <laughs> it's and, and what I mean by that is that there's nothing on the shelves. Like, um, oh, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like it's not happening. Like, like it's just, it's just they're not being stocked because everybody. 
it, it's, it's so funny how that whole thing wasn't just one area. Like right. it was like someone put on Facebook <laughs> them with like a Costco, like four Costco carts with like boxes of this shit. And they were like, it's coming. And everybody saw it and just went buck wild, you know? And uh, the, the day that I got back from tour, like I had to, I had to go, you know, try and pick up stuff because we were, our fridge was empty and, you know, and, um, my parents helped out a little bit by like giving us a care package or whatever, but I didn't have toilet paper and I went to <laughs> pharmacy and on some crazy stroke of luck, he was like restocking the shelf and there was a lineup behind him. <laughs> he was like, wait for me to finish. I'm just going to finish doing this and you can grab. And there's like a sign being like limit two per customer. Yeah. And like I, I dropped off like a prescription for Courtney and then I had to wait 45 minutes. I went and bought one because one is all you need. And then I came back to pick up the prescription 45 minutes later. The shelf was clear. <laughs> Nothing. I I don't understand what's happening with that. Like I get <sighs> I get that you you're worried about wiping your ass, but damn, like it's not. <laughs> like yeah. we so the movie Contagion. You know we we kind of did a thing where we watched some movies that are like about you know pandemics and um, sure yeah and like the in it's a very accurate movie Contagion is especially. Have you ever seen that movie? I've been wanting. I've been meaning to watch it. It is. I mean, it's like, it's like pretty close to where it's like it it origin like the virus originated in China, and then like it spread fast, especially where international travel is involved, like at all the airports and stuff. And then yeah. everyone starts freaking out, you know. But it's funny how even in a movie things make more sense than in real life because there was people fighting over batteries and, you know, th <laughs> things that, things that will help people power stuff and, and things that, will, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, and Fuzz was like, that's bullshit in real life. People fight over toilet paper because you can't wipe your ass with batteries. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> So that's it's just you know funny. like I, I would I would get it if people were fighting over goddamn pizza pockets you know <laughs> it's food yeah yeah you know, it's, it's it's but the whole yeah I don't know it <laughs> it just blows my mind right dude. it's crazy <laughs> so uh, so is it still up in the air when you're gonna get some songs out then or, or well uh, yeah doing the Howl album so yeah so we were we were scheduled to do a full length April twelfth. And we were we we instead of going to a studio, we were gonna fly. Um, our producer, his name is Dan Bronstein. We were gonna fly him from LA here, and we were gonna live in a house. We had an Airbnb for two weeks, and we were just gonna record in it. And uh, that's not happening. So um, yeah, it just uh, it all comes down to um, comes down to when the borders are open, when travel can happen, and when tickets won't be, you know, four times the price because they're trying to recoup cost. <laughs> <laughs> so you know maybe 2021 2022 we'll see <laughs> uh, the world the, what is going on in the world it's I, getting to the point where we're like sorry to me cut you off but yeah. we're, we're like we're talking about how we could do it remotely yeah. where i can have pro tools open he can then have like you know he can control my computer and then we can be facetiming <laughs> and like if that's what has I mean, to be done. that's what you can. I mean, you can technically do that, right? Because I remember, like, with you know, with like all the the MacBook, <laughs> whatever they first came out with it, you could like you could you could use someone else's screen, right? And, sure. Yeah. 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 We, people just don't do it much because it's a big pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an ideal situation, right? So. <laughs> Which I guess you got to do what you got to do. But yeah, exactly. I was pretty bummed because March was like going to be the busiest month for me to do stuff for this YouTube. I had yeah. like I had like three interviews on the Dance Gavin Dance Tour. I had like a, I had like yeah. I had CJ from the I Art is Murder. I had uh, mm -hmm. and then my buddy Lee, his his carpentry uh, job that they're called Buyer Brothers. They were doing this new project to where they like build sets and then they ha they build they build cameras uh, that go with it. 
So okay. they did a thing called Snow Days in Dallas to where they, they just took a whole lot and they just built a bunch of different Christmas sets and you could pay a, a flat rate, you could go in and then get pictures taken, like as many as you want, you go to the front desk and then they'll send you all the ones you like. So they oh, so, cool. so they were doing a thing at Fan Expo in Dallas, which was like a huge expo this year, like with like the cast of Harry Potter and all sorts, like Saved by the Bell and all sorts of shit were going to be there. And they were doing, yeah. they, were, they were building comic book sets and they wanted me to come and, and work and like interview people. And then I could do whatever I want with my YouTube there also. And then that That's got, you know, that got canceled. So <laughs> it's like, these are all sucks. very, these, these are all things that could have helped what i'm doing here out but yeah huge and I, like, that even, even that dance gavin dance tour being like rescheduled man that is such a shame like it was just stacked yeah and it was just like yeah. sold out across the board it's crazy yeah that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of money. yeah <laughs> but i mean they you know they, they already rescheduled it you know hopefully that's a realistic time frame for them to try and take that tour out again so. yeah well it's 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 funny even for us we were all thinking about it and uh it's just 2020 is basically a write-off like if you didn't have a tour and like fall or anything like that or you didn't have anything you know that you were close to nabbing like yeah. because of all the scheduled tours it's just like there's there's nothing right <laughs> Yeah. So were you, were you 2021 working? is going to be a sick year. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get a goddamn Black Widow movie. The most the most under anticipated Marvel movie for me. And I'm not even gonna get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. uh Merry did, Christmas. <laughs> were you so did you guys were you working on any fall tour plans or anything? Yeah, there was some stuff in the works. Like there was some stuff that we had been um talking about that were potential offers and stuff um but because it wasn't solidified and you know we haven't heard anything about it um i'm just assuming that that's not gonna happen right yeah <laughs> it was it was gonna be europe again but um you know all we can really do is just like i was saying before like we're just reverting back to the way that this was last year and the year before it and we're just gonna work our asses off to try and make the record as soon as possible when it's safe to do so. <laughs> and then um, just put out a bunch of videos, put out a bunch of content, and just hope for the best, you know? That's all we can really do. I mean, that's all we can and do. And that's not depressing in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what's, been, uh, what's been going on with you? Like, what's... what's um, I, know, I know you're just mentioning how, like, March is kind of a little bit scramble but like what's the plan for the next couple of months like are you because you had told me that you were playing possibly with empyrean lights is that correct or no yeah i i am so yeah we we've gotten together a few times and talked about it and they <clears throat> so daryl and krista are in a in a pretty awkward spot right now but they're just kind of like writing as much as they can whenever they can right but uh as of right now you know, I'm going to, if things go well, I'm going to move to Austin. And then if they, if they do end up getting some things together, because I know they're still writing and I know they still, yeah. they're still planning on doing something. Um, mm -hmm. So if that, you know, if it happens the, in a, the way I think it might, then I would definitely come down to play with them, come down, you know, to, yeah. to write some shit. So. Well, why not? Right. Yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you guys uh, figure stuff out too. That's good. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be cool. It's in and it's like they're they're in more of a scenario like me with their mentality. Like they're like Shh, we gotta go to work. We you know we gotta we gotta take care of shit. They got families. You know. Yeah. So yeah. it's so it's a different kind of project than than y'all living together and like buckling down and like really trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, yeah, because like I could uh, I could text them and not hear back for like a full day. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that would not sure. work with your band. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's quite a few group chats. I think there's like three or four group chats for us. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you remember the days of. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mikey's uh, 
Mikey's meme vault that you'd be like, where <laughs> yeah. the hell do you find all this? Right, yeah. I wonder how he's doing, man. Yeah, I talked to Mikey the other day, <laughs> and uh, he, you know, he's he's doing all right, I guess. And uh, it's so hard to get that dude to, like, do anything, though. <laughs> like, I, so it's hard for me whenever my normal job is work, <laughs> is rolling or whatever. It's hard for me to get weekends <laughs> off. So here lately they've been giving me like a you know a saturday off here and a sunday off there and every time i only find out like a week in advance maybe two if i'm lucky but i've hit him up been like yo i'm off on sunday yo i'm off on saturday he's like oh bud you should have gave me more time bud i definitely want to hang out bud but you know i'm in tulsa i'm in you know like gotta give me more time and then there's times where i like hit him up like two almost three weeks hey i'm off on this day uh, you got to give me more time, bud. <laughs> like, oh God, I was like, work, I was like, work with me here, dude. Like, yeah, come on. <laughs> come on. Man. Yeah. I know what you're doing. Yeah. We know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone knows it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. dude, you could come be, listen, we have an extra bathroom. You could fuck it all up. You could fucking forget to flush. You could leave your pubes in the sink, whatever. <laughs> That's so funny that you mentioned that because literally the last time I <laughs> last time I saw Mikey, we were filming we were filming that music video. It was like, you know, the first day. We we did the first scene in the uh, the forest of my brother's place that he's renting. He lives he lives on um, his friend's property, and they have like a like a, an additional like side home or whatever, like a, like an add on or whatever, you know? Right. Yeah. And so him and his wife lived there and it was perfect. It was like, they're not going to be home. It's like on like 50 acres. So no one's going to bother us. We just have to kind of like go over there or whatever. And so we set up and everything and Mike, he's like, Oh, where's the bathroom? And I was like, oh, I'll show you. And, um, I walk him into the house and then I go back down and then, you know, I see him 20 minutes later and he's walking over and he's like, so, um, the bathroom uh <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's, it's like it's like it's like kind of me- it's kind of messed up in there <laughs> and i just looked at him i was like what do you mean and he's like uh i've been taking this medication and um it's just sometimes it just like it just ruins things <laughs> and he's like staring at me it's like super straight face and i was just like what do you mean like what is <laughs> Describe what is happening here. Don't you can't just tell me that it ruins things. What? So and so we had to run in there, and then, and then he, um, I was like, okay, if if any of, if any of you have to go in this house, just make sure that it's locked because there's animals in here, or whatever. And then he ended up locking, somehow locking the keys to the house inside of the house. <sighs> <laughs> and so I call I call my brother and he's like he's doing something important and he's like hey what's up and like he was already uneasy that like a bunch of people he didn't knew he didn't know was on like his property and going in and out of his house and I was like hey uh, do you have a, a a window that's maybe open that I could and he's like what the hell happened and I explained it to him he's just like how is that even possible I was like I don't know it's my <laughs> oh my god. The shit will never end with that guy. I tell you that. <laughs> I miss him. I miss him dearly. But damn, it's pretty wild. <laughs> it's just a. I think it's just a drummer thing, man. Is there? What's up with the? What's up with the new guy? Is there anything uh, weird with him that you found out yet? That <laughs> no. You know what? It was like okay. So I found Zev on Instagram. Mm. I followed him from like a year and a half ago because Pablo from Chelsea Grin did a record recording his band, Zev's mm-hmm. band. Mm-hmm. And so in his story, he would always, every now and then he'd post like a clip of Zev or whatever. And, um, so we got the tour offer and we'd been talking about it for a long time. And then unfortunately for our drummer, it just like, it just became apparent that him doing it was just not an option, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, okay. So we finally have the offer and now, I don't have a drummer and we've accepted the offer and it's our first tour and it's, a, I feel like an idiot. So now I have to scour the internet, blah, blah, blah. And so I had like a list of like 
10 guys that I was like, if I could have anybody, it'd be this person, this person, this person. And so I hit up Zev and I hit him. I just messaged him cold on Instagram and I was like, hey, I know you don't know me. Uh, I know I'm probably much older than you. Uh, would you want a tour? You know, blah, blah, blah. He was super into it. FaceTimed like three times. He did a bunch of videos. And then, um, yeah, we had only talked on FaceTime two or three times out of three months before. And leading up to it, me and Courtney were kind of just like, what if he's like a Trump supporter or something? Like, what if, <laughs> what if just... Right. You got to think of every... Not, like, what you know? if he's a fucking chaos? Like, he, he leaves messes in bathrooms and yeah. leaves the keys. To- <laughs> yeah. What if he puts mustard on your white shoes? Yeah, what if he fucking eats corn dogs in the dead of the night and puts the fucking remains on your white vans? <laughs> What if what if he eats bats? You Whoa. know? Whoa. What if he's be he'd be causing pandemics and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? That those are the questions we asked ourselves. And then <laughs> and then, you know, he showed up super nice. We um I had sent everyone like the session for like months in advance so that everybody like could practice by themselves. They hit space bar. It was what it was going to be the whole month. Yeah. And so we showed up about, uh, he showed up, we, we, we hung out for a few hours. We went and rehearsed and it was like, we had been rehearsing for like two to three months together. There was like no weirdness, whatever. Right. Um, he, he learned all the right songs. <laughs> it was like, it was like, uh, you know, it's, it's like he was present and it was, uh, concentrating the whole time <laughs> and uh <laughs> no, i'm just kidding um he wasn't thinking about putting bus sandwiches and <laughs> vocalist jack pocket that's what oh yeah anyway. so, remember do you remember um another really funny thing that just came to mind when we were announcing <laughs> i can't believe we did this when we were announcing that we were doing hail mary on artery yeah and like we had like a legitimate video where it was like us playing live from like a tour before or whatever, and it was all like, you know, dark and black and white and like eerie sounding. Mm-hmm. But the one that we did to announce that we were actually doing it to Facebook, do you remember we had uh, a screenshot of Windows ninety five, like where it had like <laughs> network neighborhood and like yeah. my computer, so it made it look like. Because we we filmed we filmed on an iPhone and we filmed we we also had a notepad and we wrote a thing out and had it play from Microsoft Sam. <laughs> yeah. So Microsoft Sam came on and was like, "Hello, I wrestle the bear one has a new album coming out," and we filmed it with an iPhone. And at the end of it, we just put a bunch of gibberish and it was like, <laughs> but we filmed yeah. it on an iPhone and for what I've always found this to be the funniest thing was when we filmed that because it made it look like the computer, our recording computer that we were recording the record on was running Windows 95. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was it dumb. was just the dumbest thing. <laughs> the, <laughs> I still think about that. I don't know why. Yeah. Hi, we're making a new album, which will be released through Artery's recordings in 2015. Come, come, heavy, come, come, breakdowns, come, come, blast beats, come, come, the BR00TLZ, come, come, love. Iris Barons. The other thing I always think about too is the idea that we had for um, doing one of the fast songs to just a visual of The Sims. Yeah. <laughs> but we were the Sims at that time. Right. But, so what would they be doing? Like in the video, would they be doing ill shit? Like, like well, it was gonna, it was gonna be for the song "Kill to Death." Uh-huh. We're just gonna. Like <laughs> we were gonna show like us creating the families, and then we were just gonna kill each <laughs> family member. Right. Like we were gonna like, put them in the pool and then take the 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 ladder out of the pool out, so they just drown. You right. know, <laughs> yeah. we were gonna use the original Sims, not like any of like the 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 twenty five newest right. mansion pack, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Um, uh, <laughs> like when you're ma- when you're coming up with like song ideas and you just don't have an, an, uh, something to name your file, you'll just like put something 
And then you'll look like months later at all your files and there's like at least three of them named the same thing. <laughs> and you're like, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have named it Taco Bell Diarrhea 420. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I look at my desktop and it's like Ass Man 1, Ass Man 2. <laughs> like, oh, man, which one is it? Dude. I can still click it and hear what it is. I had sent him all the pre-production for that old record that we did. And all the songs were tentative names. Now, the song that I wanted him to do was called Hot Fire. Uh But then there was also another song on there called Hot Pocket. (laughs) We had another. Didn't we have a Hot Pocket on the Iwabo album as a tentative name? (laughs) It killed to death was hot pockets because right. remember at the beginning it did the it did the the sample it did the the fast part and then all of a sudden we had a sample from the commercial it just said hot pocket <laughs> remember that yeah yeah and then last minute we're like we probably we probably shouldn't have it <laughs> one of the you know one of the coolest things obviously we've ever been or ever talked about <clears throat> was, yeah. was the haunted house thing so. Yes. Have you ever thought about re-sparking that idea for the Haunted House? Which, okay, this band has talked a lot about Haunted House stuff, so you have to refresh my memory. Are you talking about the Iwabo? Yes. Whenever, recording? Yes. House? Whenever we were offered a potentially yes. free recording where we stay at yeah. a Haunted House. and yeah. just, Have you thought about doing that again? We have. We've thought about it. It's like it's difficult though because I I don't know how to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. You know, like because you can't go on Airbnb and be like haunted house. You know, like just, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work right. like that. Right. Um, but that would be something I would love to do. There's there's been a couple times where we've like, you know, like especially in like the earlier days when we were actually using like EVPs and stuff in the songs and mm-hmm. in the music. Yeah. Where like, you know, there's been some some weird stuff that's come up in audio or whatever, but like we haven't, and also like you know we filmed videos at like abandoned places and stuff like that. As far as actually going and sitting there and recording in a haunted ass place, that that would be like, that would be a dream for me. That'd be yeah. amazing. But well, I have to tell you right now, if you let's just say that you guys do a record, you 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 blow up. You, you get a chance for a second record and that idea pops up, I'm going to have to come out there. <laughs> I'm going to have to come stay and then we could just do some silly video stuff and try and experience what's going on. You know what I mean? Dude, you're more than welcome to whenever you want. You know that. Um, <clears throat> amazing. That'd be incredible. Yeah. Remember that time we it. went to the, the Queen Mary? Yes, I do remember that. And we looked up the room, was, the haunted room, and uh, you were like looking through the people, like, dude, I fucking saw something in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> saw me something in there, dude. I know it. Yeah, and then you're like, well, it's funny. It sounds like the sink's on in there, man. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely heard something weird in there, dude. I mean, it was it was it was, it weird. was it was an interesting time. It was it, but you know what's funny about it is that we only caught on to what was going on because we were like you know, drinking and walking around and we just so happened to like catch the tail end of like, you know, the, the ghost tour guy being like, and this is room three, one, one. And like, you know, talking about all the whatever. And we're like, well, that's the one. And then we just stood in front of it drinking for like half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, is anybody in there? You know, like, <laughs> but uh, apparently, apparently that room is open now. Oh, really? And you can stay in it. That's what I've heard. Hmm. I don't that could be fake news. I don't know. Um, but uh, that would be very interesting, to say the least. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think this band, this band is, it, for the new stuff especially, we're definitely getting back to um, using more um, eerie and kind of weird audio for that stuff. So it would definitely make a lot more sense to, um, you know, be somewhere that's kind of creepy and right. eerie. We'll see. I don't know. If well, it's in cool. the budget, do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's always been my dream to go somewhere haunted and live there with my friends because I can't do it alone. So <laughs> No. Dude, but I can I can 
I can watch stuff and I can I can look up stuff and research stuff if someone else is home. But the moment that I'm like by myself and I'm looking at all that stuff, I can like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. For me, it's it's more so just so interesting to me. Yeah, you know me what too. I mean. Yeah, it's not like a blind like oh this is this is the way things are. Yeah, it's just you know every now and then you can look at something and go like that's really interesting actually. Well, yeah, you know like I mean? a phenomenon is a phenomenon for a reason. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like it's interesting. <laughs> it's like do you believe or not? You know, like let's t- whether you believe or not, you could talk about it for, for yeah, a long exactly. time. So it's for so sure. funny when you start reminiscing about old times or just talking about like you know things that we used to do together and you start thinking me i'm like wow like that actually was (laughs) like it feels like an eternity ago it feels like a different lifetime you know yeah i mean and it's so upsetting to be like you know there was a point in time where we're like well you know we'll see you later uh hopefully we see each other like next year and then that's turned into like five years so (laughs) yeah <clears throat> yeah, man. I still remember when we all um, went our separate ways at the end of 2015, and I remember we got me and Courtney got to our gate, and we were just like, "Holy shit, that might be like one of the last times for a long time that we see those people." You know, let's see especially, our friends, especially Mikey. <laughs> 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 we, were, we were lucky to see him on tour. <laughs> yeah, I'd be lucky to see him the moment that we finished playing. He would, or or before. I'd be like, where the hell's our drummer? <laughs> but like y'all could tour Where's again. That? Y'all could tour again. Invite him to the show, and he would say yes. And then you're still lucky if you might see him that night. <laughs> yeah, he, he might have to get his brakes done, huh? <laughs> right. God, my brakes again. We're gonna go this time. It's been we are. It's been amazing. Thank you, Michael, yes, for for getting on this this call. I'm. I hopefully did not fuck this one up. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still yet to well, see. You know. But uh, you'll 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 have to text me ten minutes from now. Let me know if we got the green light or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, hey, if you like the video, give us a, give us a like. Share the video. Comment. Ask Michael Stringer what the new album's gonna sound like. Is it gonna sound more like the old stuff or is it gonna sound like the new stuff, bud? Is it gonna be uh, just actually a total interpretive dance, not even an album? We don't know. We have no idea. Is it gonna be Sandstorm influenced? The answer is yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you, Michael. See you later. And I'll see you later. Thank you, Ricky. I appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Uh, Am I supposed to hang up now? Yeah. (laughs)